I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah who is alone and without any partners and do not have any associates and I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last and final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May peace and blessings be upon him, his family, his companions, and on all those people who are following the path of righteousness. Iqbal Muslimin, a very unfortunate thing nowadays in the society is that sin is becoming normal. People do not really think twice before they commit anything which goes against the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So a sin basically is anything, anything we say or any action we do which is against the commands of Allah and his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sin in Islam. Though there are a lot, there is a lot happening in our society. How, however, I would like to mention few sins which is committed through tongue. The reason I'm saying or the reason I've chose this topic is the sins which are committed through tongue, we are ourselves the best judge to see if we are doing it by purpose, on purpose or if it is just happening. Sheikh Khan Muslimin, unfortunately again nowadays uttering any kind of words from our mouth without considering that how swear it can be people try to cover it by different things by different phrases if or let me rephrase it by saying we don't care if somebody is being mentally tortured by those words we don't care if those words can be an insult to other for example sometimes we refer to somebody by saying oh he's fat He's short, he looks like this, he looks like that, he's old or he's young and stuff like that. Or sometimes we utter words from our mouth mocking or ridiculing others, making fun of others. Sometimes those words are to highlight the faults of others or to defame others. Prophet Muhammad wasallam says in the narration of Bukhari and Muslim, Prophet Muhammad wasallam says, Inna al-abda la yatakallamu bi kalima. Verily, the abd, the slave of Allah, may speak kalima, single word, yanzilu biha fin nar, for which he plummets, dives, falls, fin nar, into hellfire. And the hadith does not stop there. And that Prophet says, Abada ma bayn al mashriqi wal maghrib. And the depth of that hellfire where he is being falling is more than or farther than the distance between east and west. Subhanallah, between east and west. This is how deep the person goes when he utters something from his mouth, a single word which is displeasing to Allah or which can become a reason for him to fall into hell which is that deep. Yaqwal Muslimin. Once again, I'd like to repeat, not a sentence, but a word a person utters, which can put him into depth of that hellfire. There are a lot of things, but I've tried to, you know, summarize the thing into two main uh, sins. The very first thing is, which is very normal, has become very normal in all of the society, regardless of the religion, is lying People speak or withhold something to deceive others. They speak about something which is not true. See, in one sentence, in one line, in Islam, lying is haram, not allowed, forbidden. And in Islam, when something is haram, that means for committing that thing, a person is going to go to hell for that. This is an easy way to remember haram. That haram means if you commit it or somebody will commit it, the person would end up in hell unless he repents or Allah or forgives him. Yani that's a dif different thing. So before we, going, before we go into the religious perspective of it, we must understand that why people lie. This is the most important point to understand because a person can stand anywhere 
and preach people not to lie. But if the person would not highlight the reasons behind lying, or if the person would not mention what is the disease, the cure may not work. Shaykh al Muslimin, if we will see, the general, again, in one sentence we can say the general problem is showing superiority upon others. I'm not talking about lying because of fear or lying on the job. No, this is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about generally people lie because they want to show their superiority upon others, which is worst of the thing. For example, a person would lie about his status, job title, academic degrees, awards, because they want to inflate their achievements. They want to show others that I am much better than you when it comes to these things. Another, another thing is Ikhwan Muslimin, because they want to become famous among influential people, or they want to have connection with influential people. So they would fabricate relationships based on lies. Another main reason is nobody wants to accept that they do not have, for example, a latest mobile, or for example, a latest car, or a big house. So if this is the case, where the wealth is involved, then people would lie up to the extent saying, you know, before coming to this country, I was, and I was, and I was. The reason is again, Ikhwan Muslimin, I want to show the superiority that though I'm not driving a new car right now, or though I do not have a big house right now, but this is something uh, I used to have a lot back home. Another problem, Ikhwan Muslimin, people want to show that they're much informed than others. And they would make up things and lie about things. It can be religious things, it can be political things, it can be social issues, it can be social relationships. But people are not really scared of making things up and that thing as well. And another last thing, for taking credit of others' work. This is another huge problem in our society. People would lie. They want to show that, oh, it was actually me who had suggested that. Or whatever the person is doing, it was me who told him to do that. It was me who built this building. It was me who built this hospital. Yaqfal Muslimin, these things can be very severe. In the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how severe it can be, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Nahal, chapter 16, ayah number 116, وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَا تَصِفُ أَلْسِنَتُكُمُ الْكَذِبُ do not falsely declare with your tongues clear statement, a clear order. Do not, falsi do not falsely declare with your tongues. Well, like, there's a lot we can say, but I'll try to go through the things quickly to try to, you know, gather as much, uh, try to give you as much information as I can. Prophet Muhammad says in the narration of Bukhari, that a hypocrite, a munafiq, munafiq is the one who's going to go to the hell and not only to the hell, but to the special depth of the hell, which is like the lowest of the hell. Prophet Muhammad says that person who is going to go to that depth, that special level, which is there, he generally have three qualities, four actually. In Bukhari, it is mentioned three. And out of those three, one is that whenever he talks, he lies Whenever he talks, he lies. And a very unfortunate thing is, Yafal Muslim, a very unfortunate thing, sometimes we see people that when we talk to them, it is so difficult to know if they are telling the truth at all. And in fact, I know some people who would be very proud of saying that, you know what, I lie about this and I lie about this and I got this from lying and I got this from lying and this is the truth. This is the trait of a successful person or this is the trait to become this person and that person. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Yani Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that if you lie, you're a hypocrite, a munafiq. 
Wallahi, in Quran, there's a whole chapter called as Surah Munafiqoon. This is how swear, this is how serious it is. And then, the Akhwal Muslimin, in narration of Sunan Abu Dawood, Prophet Muhammad Sallam says that lying is betrayal, preaching. Prophet Muhammad Sallam says it is a great treachery that you should tell your brother something and you have him believe you when you are lying. We are basically betraying people, telling them something to believe in which is absolutely false. And again, as I've said, if we go down, bottom, you know, to the reasons, we would see mostly the reason is because I want to show the superiority. Lying leads to hell. As we had already mentioned, one hadith in the beginning, in another hadith of Bukhari and Muslim, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, and beware of lying. For lying leads to wickedness. And wickedness leads to hell. A person may continue to tell lies and endeavor to tell lies until he is recorded with Allah as liar. Then a person who thinks, you know, it's okay to lie, it's okay to say this, it's okay to say that. Prophet is saying that the person would be recorded with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a liar. See, sometimes what happens is, person thinks, oh, it's a small thing, you know, it's, it's okay if I've said that. For example, if somebody will say, from where you bought this mobile? Now, I know, you know, that I went to maybe a Sunday market or whatever market and I bought it for $50. Oh, oh I went to this store in that city and I bought it for this many thousand dollars and hundreds of dollars. And then people say, oh, it's, it's not a lie. It's not really affecting anyone. No, it is. You're lying. You're betraying the person. You're making him believe something which is not true. Sometimes, yani with very sorry, you know, it is in females, they would order something from the market, from the restaurant, and somebody say, oh, from where you got so oh, I made it. You know, it can be, you know, true to men as well, of course. Nowadays, everybody cooks. And they may think, oh, it is nothing. It is just, you know, to show people I can do it. No, it is not just to show people. In the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that person is a liar. Same way, sometimes for men, they would say, what kind of job do you do? And so, oh, you know what? I'm a supervisor or manager or CEO or, or something the biggest I can think of. Or I own a company. And in actual, that's false. That's a lie. And if you would ask that person later on, that why did you lie? You will say, oh, it's okay. Nobody's getting hurt. Nobody's, you know is having any problem or, you know, nobody is getting into any trouble because of that. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that person is recorded as a liar. Liar is the word. And lying leads to hell. And lying is haram. Jokes. Some say, oh, we just joke. Prophet ﷺ says in Sunan Abi Dawood, Woe to the one who tells lies to make people laugh. Woe to him, woe to him, three times. Yani lana on him. Be cursed, yani curse on him, something like this. The person who lies to make people laugh. Nowadays we say, oh, it's okay, you know, people are laughing, I can just say anything. No, I cannot, yeah, if one Muslim mean. Nobody can. Because we are in agreement with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will not lie. Even as a joke. And the punishment of lying. Yani in this dunya, what will happen will happen. There's a narration of Bukhari. Prophet Sallallahu says that I was in my dream taken to show hell in heaven. See the dream of prophets are true. The dream of prophets are not, not like yours and mine. Whenever a prophet dreams, whatever he dreams of is a truth. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says that a man was lying flat on his back. He was taken to the hell. And then he saw this man, that the man was lying flat on his back. And another man was standing over his head with an iron hook. So the person is lying, head, and the other person is standing here with an iron hook. And he would put the hook in one side of the man's mouth. 
book on one side of the man's mouth and tear off that side of his face to the back of his neck. Hook in the mouth, tearing it from here up to the back of the neck. And similarly, tear his nose from the front to the back of his eyes and back. And then the person would turn to the other side. And even the first the person with the hook was standing on this side, now I have to go to the other side. So then he turned to the other side of the man's face and did just as he had done with the other side. He hardly completed this side when the other side returned to its normal state. So when this person with the hook would tear his cheeks, his mouth up to the back of the neck, would tear the nose up to his eyes and back from one side, when he'll go to the other side, he would start doing the same. This side, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make it return to the normal state. And this was happening. Prophet Muhammad was told that he is the symbol of the man who goes out of his house in the morning and tells so many lies that it spreads all over the world. And nowadays, my dear brothers and sisters, with the help of social media, social media marketing, paying few hundred dollars, anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. Now there are people available, you can hire them, you can design whatever you want to design with all the flashy pictures, with all the flashy effects, make a video, make a picture, put it on social media, pay a few hundred bucks, let it spread in the society. And we all see nowadays people do this to get famous. Famous is the word to show the superiority. Superiority is the word. And they don't care what is going to happen in this dunya. And they don't even learn what will happen in the akhirah. Allahu Akbar. Well, I, maybe you will be thinking today, you know, it's very swear. Imam is being very serious. So now, on the other side, reward of taking care of the tongue. It's not only one way. If Prophet Muhammad Sallam has said that there are punishments for speaking lie, there are always rewards for not speaking lies or for telling the truth. <coughs> Prophet Muhammad Sallam says in the narration of Bukhari, well, I, I think even if somebody would take this hadith, only this hadith, inshallah he would go to Jannah because of this. <coughs> Prophet Muhammad Sallam says, whoever guarantees me the chastity of what is between his legs, that is private part. And what is between his jaws, that is tongue, I guarantee him paradise. Guarantee him paradise. Allah, these two things what Prophet Sallallahu has mentioned is the biggest evil of any society. Biggest evil. Because the, these two things are the one which causes person to commit worst of the sins which makes a person goes through worst of the mental state, which makes a person falls into hell to the worst of the depth. If a person would just take this hadith of Prophet Muhammad between your jaws and between your legs, if you protect those things from committing social evils, Prophet Muhammad says, I guarantee, guarantee you paradise. Allah Akbar, what else a person asks for? Guarantee you paradise. Yaqal Muslim in another narration of Abu Dawood. Prophet Muhammad says, I guarantee a house in the middle of the paradise. And normally, we all know that whenever we are buying a property or something, the middle of the city is the most expensive one, is the most valuable one. So Prophet Muhammad says, I guarantee a house in the middle of the paradise for one who refrains from lying even when he is joking. Even when he is joking. This is how important for a mu'min to be truthful. To be sadiq. This is how important for Muslims not to lie. And in another narration. Prophet Muhammad says, Allahu Akbar. This is also beautiful hadith. A man utters a word 
pleasing to Allah. Yani a person who is of a good character, who tries his best not to say anything which displeases Allah, and then he talks good, and then he say good things, and while he is talking in his normal life, general life, he utter a word which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Prophet says, without considering it of any significance. Yani he thinks it's normal. Whatever he's saying, it's normal. Yani there is nothing very special about it. But he's trying not to say anything bad. So Prophet says, if he does this, for this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exalts, elevates his ranks, his owners, and in Jannah. Yani this is not, it is in the Prophet. When Prophet says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates his rank, his status, his honor, that is in this dunya and in akhirah. Allahu Akbar. This is the narration of Bukhari as well. Well, I see, imagine if it was that simple. Why would Prophet Muhammad guarantees paradise? A house in the middle of the paradise. So sometimes, as I was saying at the beginning, sometimes we do not realize that a small lie can go up to so far that it can ruin people's life. And you know what? Before I give you examples, or of course, you know, it will be time consuming. You think. You think of a person, whoever you think is a liar, and just think that those small lies have ruined how many plans and have ruined how many people's future. And at the end, what that person has to say is, like this. So what? It happened. It can happen with anybody. If it happened because you were not lying, then it's fine. But if it happens because of your lies, the person I'm dealing with, if it has happened because of his lies, then there is no forgiveness for him until I will forgive him. And Yafal Muslimin, again, please move forward so that we can, people can fit in. Fit in. Jazakallah khair. So, Khan Muslimin, again, these lies, before you say lie about anyone, about something, about a situation, remember that you are playing probably, maybe with somebody's life. And maybe just that little word or sentence or something you are saying can make a huge difference in person's life. I'll give you just one example. God forbid... God forbid, you know, that somebody lies about a relationship. For example, I want to get my daughter married to somebody. And the other person I'm asking question is he lies about the boy or vice versa. I want to get my son married and he lies or she lies about the woman. Just imagine if I believe in it. The two lives are going to be affected in a way that for the next whatever years they will be together, they'll be cursing each other. And who would be the reason? Or what would be the reason? That lie which was told by that person saying, oh, it was for good. I did it for something good. I never thought this will happen. Who gives you the responsibility to think what will happen? You are supposed to tell the truth. In this case, specifically in this case, what I'm saying. We are not supposed to take responsibilities of the thing, of the things which we are not answerable for. And the Akhwal Muslimin, this few more minutes we have, another reason for not lying apart from religious are that as a parent, it has got a huge, a grave effect on our children, on the people around us. See, either we like it or not, we are always role model to somebody. Maybe as a father, maybe as a brother, maybe as an uncle, maybe as a neighbor. Somebody, we are always a role model to somebody. And now imagine if that person or that child adopts this habit of lying from me. What will happen to him when he would adopt this habit? What will happen to him in this dunya or akhirah? I would be the reason and I will be getting the same punishment on the Day of Judgment. Same as we have Sadaqah Jariyah. Same way in Islam, there is Adab Jariyah. 
if something gets ruined, if somebody gets into trouble, if somebody do something wrong, because I, because of me, or because I taught that person to do, Wallahi, any time, at all the times, whenever he will do, I will get the same sin. How? Prophet Sallam says, that any person who gets killed on this earth, any person who gets killed on, the, uh, on this earth, you know up to where the adab goes? Up to Qabil, the person who committed the first murder on this planet. The adab goes up to there. He even gets a part of that sin when somebody kills somebody. This is how severe it is. Not to lie. The other problem, Ya Khwal Muslimin, moral development. It kills the moral values. Imagine a person in himself is a liar. You know, what other moral values he will have? What other moral values he will have? It ruins the relationship as a son to my father, as a brother to my siblings, as a father to my children, as a neighbor to my neighbor. It ruins the relationship. And again, again, you just look around you and think of a person who lies and see what are his social life experiences. The person would be going through a lot of mental stress. People would hate him for who he is. Probably his own children wouldn't like him. After they grow up, they will leave him. They will just go away. Nobody wants to be around a liar. Because that person do not have any respect for honesty. And these children in long run, if not taken care of, would become cheaters and liars. Cheaters and frauds. And the Afghan Muslimin, the last thing which I should have said, which I said a little earlier, if we want to save our relationship, if we want to save our faith, our Iman, if we want to save our Islam, I'm saying it purposely, Iman and Islam, if we want to save them, we have to become truthful. So our deeds can be accepted in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever good deeds we have done will not be given to others on the day of judgment because I have been lying to people. So it is very important that we always think before we say anything. It is always important that we choose our words carefully. It is always important to think that my words are not going to harm anyone. And Ya Khwal Muslimin, it is always important to think that I am accountable for my speech. For anything that comes out of my mouth. And last but not least, Wallahi, what will happen to the person in the Akhirah, it will happen. In this dunya, I have experienced that. I have, I have seen this happening. And I'm sure you would have seen this happening as well. A person lies, a person dies as a liar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have exposed him even after his death. Through his son, through his wife, through his other relatives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is exposed and not only exposed. Exposed in a way that everybody goes like this. Oh, something like this. You know, go like, oh, we never thought this, this person is going to do this. And now imagine what would those people who come to know about this guy, how would they make the prayer of forgiveness for this guy? Yani that feelings, that emotions in the heart for that guy to be forgiven from where it would come when they would know that this guy used to be a liar, cheater, fraud. How? And again, you know, I've met a people, then you know, I've met somebody, he was so upset with Mr. X or Ms. Y. He said, if this guy would die, I will not even pray janaza for him. I will not pray. Yani the person is still alive, you know, still, he's still alive. But because of the lies, because of the he said, I'm not going to pray Janaza. I don't know what will happen later. Maybe he did pray it. I don't know. But I'm saying sometimes this is where it can lead. And imagine this person who's saying, I'm not going to pray Janaza for him. Imagine what kind of bad duas he would be making for this guy. Yani what kind of torture that guy must have gone through. And what do you think is going to happen at the end of the day? Yani on the day of resurrection. Well, it looks like that guy... Forget about his good deeds. Because if he's been lying to him, he's been lying to many people. All the bad deeds of that person is going to go to that guy who's a liar. 
No matter even if he is doing good deeds like the mountain of Ahad, Prophet said. So Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the people who are always careful what is coming out of our mouth. Who are always careful what they are saying. Who are always careful that whatever I say, it should become a sadqa jariya for me instead of adhab jariya. So we pray that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes whatever we are saying a good deed from us, inshallah. Whatever we are uh, saying, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect those words from sin, inshallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from committing these kind of sins. Whatever I said are all reminders and not fatwas. Whatever is good is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if there is a mistake, that is because of my weakness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our love for him and for his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us from the people who apply the knowledge they acquire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reunite us with the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And our loved ones in the highest of the place of the paradise inshallah. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqa ajma'een. Bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimeen. Wa akhiru da'wana. Anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.